To support this podcast, go to positivesarcasm.com slash donate. Any amount is appreciated. Once again, positivesarcasm.com slash donate. Thank you and enjoy the program. Jay here, positivesarcasm.com, recorded here from New Hampshire's beautiful seacoast inside the Spare Parts Studio. Like, subscribe, share, donate, positivesarcasm.com slash donate. Any amounts appreciated. You know, it's been what? I te- uh, 10 years, 2024, started the podcast in March 2014, so it's been officially 10 years of uh, of this thing uh, on and off, and uh, this segment and that segment and this format and that format, but it's been officially 10 years, um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. It ha- has been a roller coaster of, uh, of life as far as what's taken place in this podcast, whether it's been personal or um, <clears throat> how the segments work, or just trying to get this damn thing organized so I can continue to move forward with it in some type of fashion. But it's 10 years. I'm still behind this desk, still got a hot microphone, and we are moving along. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, you can go to my website, positivesarcasm.com. You can email me through the contact section, positivesarcasm at outlook.com. I just dropped a blog that I've, had, I've been sitting on for probably months, uh, and I finally just looked at it again and i go all right and then i just started tinkering with it um and it's done i decided to release it the artwork is not great i'll be honest with you the artwork was not great i did not spend a lot of time on the artwork there wasn't uh much motivation to really focus on the artwork it was just like get it posted focus on what you have to say don't worry about the artwork this time um so that is up you can view that at actually is that on line i'm pretty sure it is let me just double check something really quickly i'm pretty sure it's up let me go to the home page let me go to the podcast section Jeez, i well we'll do this on the fly i'll show you exactly i'll show you guys exactly where to find it at my website if you want to download it and stream it it is if you're subscribed to the podcast um on youtube rumble or through like the audio version of this podcast then yes you'll absolutely be able to see it um so but on my website you just go to the podcast section and it should be bam right there under uh positive sarcasm presents welcome matt but it should be if i go to what i need to do is actually go to my article archive because it's technically is an arc it is an article and it needs to be put here um the last time i dropped them was called the great reschlep that was october 3rd 2022 so i need to just upload it here uh and then put the photo uh, the article photo up here um, and I've done some. I've had some bangers come out uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, the Great Reschlep was uh, kind of just you know some regular jokey joke type of stuff. Um, Rules for Congress was actually a serious article that I put together for some standard guidelines that Congress would follow, but most likely won't. And then Let It Fly. Let It Fly was great. First of all, the artwork was fantastic. It literally looks like I'm trying to catch a real bat. Um, but that one was a lot of fun to, to write. That one was great. I settled what I had to say uh, about the whole COVID thing and then moved on from there. But I'm going to put that up and it'll be available there. But if you are a listener to the podcast, then uh, you will be able to uh, you'll be able to hear it. You'll be able to hear it. And if you're on YouTube or Rumble, then you'll be able to see it. Um, taking some time today to uh, get another podcast out before I have a nice, enjoyable weekend. Um Got to go clean the car and, you know, it's covering your car. If you cover your car, you're going to have you're going to have micro scratches on it. So you're going to have to uh, get some paint correct, not paint correction, but you use some swirl remover. You got to use it over the entire car after you wash it. Start with that. Uh, then use that paint and swirl remover. Adams makes a great one. It turns gritty when you apply it with water. And then after that, you wipe that stuff off and then you apply your wax unless you're going to go ahead and do a polish you can but you can go straight to like a wash uh, a wash a wax uh, depends on what you want to do and then after that do like a quick spray and a quick spray will wipe off all that additional wax residue and then your car is good to go uh tires kind of the same thing put a little wax you know make sure you wash them do a little wax on the inside to keep them nice and shiny and then put a little bit of that wet spray around the um t- on the actual tire itself and then you you're just you're gonna be good to go. As far as windows goes, there's all kinds of like windows spray cleaner and stuff. You know what the best stuff is? A little bit of soap and a little bit of water, and then dry it off with a hand cloth. 
That's it. That's the only way I've been able, um, with the exception of maybe like uh, Rain-X alcohol spray, uh, it's the only way I've been able to like actually get a window clean. Like an actual clean with like no streaks on it. There's, to me, there's no, there's nothing else out there. It's just classic soap and water and then dry it off with a hand cloth and then you're done. There's, there's nothing, there's, I don't see any other thing that you can put out there. Uh, other than, because then at night you see like the shiny, you see like the grease on it and it's just disgusting. But it's an effort, it's a, and, and it's a process that generally takes me about three hours. The interior of the car is super easy because I keep up with it. So all I have to do is just give it a quick wipe down, dump out the mats really quickly, and it's it's gorgeous. It's perfect. Um, a little bit, a, a quick vacuum because of the upkeep won't take too long. Right now it's pollen season, so that's going to be a lot of fun, especially in a convertible. Uh, but if I, I'm going to do that today, and I'm not going to be complaining about it later. And I only have to do... A scratch and swirl remover I think once a year maybe twice a year so once when I bring when I'm ready for the summer and once before I put it away would probably be the most beneficial it takes work man but you can't be lazy and before I get into the actual Q&A uh, segment y you just can't be lazy in general like I'm following the stock market I have two computers on right now I have I'm watching um, stock portfolio stuff over here on a computer that is probably 14 years old. It's an old Celeron that I managed to piece together and turn into a decent computer. Uh, cost me nothing, but it is running an SSD drive with with uh, uh, with uh, with a good amount of RAM for for its speed. It's running Weeble Desktop, which if it's running Weeble Desktop relatively quickly, this computer has value. The computer I have here running the podcast is from 2017, 2018. 6th gen i7 mobile processor didn't cost me any uh, anything i just did an upgrade on the ssd and uh doubled the ram and she's a freak um her pla her build wise as far as the plastic um infrastructure is dog shit but that's fine it was free it runs great i got a bunch of stuff attached to it and just with a little bit of effort um it has paid me dividends as far as what i'm able to do as far as my laptop stuff goes um, I don't like having everything running off of one PC. I like to have, like, this is designed specifically to do audio and editing and video, and just it sits here, and it doesn't move, and everything's attached to it, and I don't have to reattach anything. It's just, boom, I press, you know, I turn it on, I open up my programs, and I go to work. Uh, I don't have to figure out where anything is because I know where it is. Stationary works. Eventually, I think this um, will turn into one of my desktops that I have. I have two servers. One of them is for storage purposes, and the other one is going to be probably for the actual podcast. It's a Xeon processor. It's designed to be a real workhorse, and I think that will eventually turn into the official uh, you know, de uh, Spare Parts Studio server, the, the Spare Parts Studio uh, computer, where I record and do all the editing on there. And... That this is just a matter of me collecting these items and planning ahead uh, on a relatively low budget where these computers cost me nothing. And this is all due to just my efforts of being willing to take this stuff in and make plans for them on the cheap instead of going out and spending hundreds or thousands of dollars on these items. Um, I have yet to really – I mean I just I just uh, acquired another – an Asus Vivo book. Um, I don't know if it turns on, I just, but I do need a, a cable to it. But I'm not going to invest in that cable because I don't know if the computer works. But I have it, and if I happen to come across somebody who has a, a similar VivoBook adapter, I can plug it in and see if this thing turns on. And if it does, great. I have an extra computer, and I can do some things with it. But other than that, I'm just going to leave it over there for now because it takes up no room. And the reward versus risk is low. Well, the reward is high. The risk is minimal. And this is just due to effort, just not being lazy and willing to have an organization uh, of my of my items so that I can continue to use that towards investing or 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 vacations or buying another car, which I'm working on. Not a not not a primary, but my secondary car, my winter car. And I have eyes on all these things. You just can't be lazy, man. And I think that everything that is going on right now, as far as individual problems, whether you can't get a house 
whether you can't you can't find your own apartment, you can't afford a car, you can't afford the gas, you can't afford to travel, you can't afford to have a nice wardrobe, is due to your willingness not to make the effort, the basicness to be lazy. There are many avenues for people, lots of people, with the exception of blah, 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 and blah, 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 for you to go out and make a, first of all, aesthetically, making a wardrobe for yourself is inexpensive when you have places like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Walmart, Target, and Salvation Army, and Goodwill, where you can buy pants for $3, you can buy a shirt for $4, and if you spend, and if you, you know, spend maybe once or twice a week going to these places and looking very hard at purchasing inexpensive items, you can go to the the undershirt, undershirt section of TJ Maxx or Marshalls, and if you go and look in those sections, um, on clearance, they will have like a four pack of t-shirts in different colors, whether it be an Aeropostal or Levi's or True Religion. These four packs of just regular t-shirts that you can just throw on and get where you need to go and look somewhat fresh. And you'll be sp- and you'll spend maybe between six and eight bucks and boom, you've got four t-shirts that and I wear these Aeropostal uh, t-shirts. They're a crew cut. They fit nice on my arms. They uh, have a long waistline, so they don't look like I just bought a Smedium. They look great on my chest. It's a great shirt, and I spent next to nothing on them. So that wardrobe-wise, yeah, and then pants on clearance because right now retail is starting to hit a lull. So you're going to see a lot of summertime clearances. And then at the Salvation Army or at Goodwill, you're going to be able to – collect on a lot of unused clothes. People are like, ew, gross clothes. Like, shut up. I don't want to hear it. All right. Especially the, some of the products, Banana Republic, Tommy Hilfiger, Magnani, um, uh, uh, Polo, uh, these like actual good, good quality materials that you can get for cheap. Um, buying stocks is not an expensive, ta- not an expensive task. Uh, OXLC, which is a dividend paying stock that just raised its dividend by 12%. And it's already a 20% dividend paying stock monthly they're five dollars they're less than five and a half dollars a share and they pay out monthly and there's a drip function in weeble that allows you that allows you to automatically reinvest your dividends back into the stock and it just accrues and accrues and accrues so i mean imagine you with maybe a a five six thousand dollar portfolio be making almost a thousand dollars a year just in dividends. That's a hundred dollars. That's like uh, eighty to ninety bucks a month. That pays for your phone bill, or that could pay for your gas. That could pay for a night out, or you could just reinvest it. Five dollar, five under five and a half dollars a share for OXLC. PSCC is at five dollars and six cents a share. That pays six cents a share monthly. Pennant PNNT. That's paying like uh like seven cents a share. That's like seven dollars and third forty cents right now a share. Uh, and, and then you have other you have other stocks as well that pay out monthly or pay out quarterly. And then you can, right now, if you want to invest in the future, right now SoFi is trading at under seven dollars a share. And there's a lot of AI stocks that right now are hitting an all time low that you may want to consider going YOLO on. And this is for entertainment purposes only, folks. I'm not, I'm, but I am spitting truths right now. That as far as these stocks are available, in making a portfolio for yourself is cheap. It is cheap. So aesthetically, you can make a nice wardrobe for yourself for little to no money. You can make um, a portfolio for yourself for little to no money. I started and I rebuilt my portfolio from scratch in april of 2023 i had zero dollars in my investment accounts zero there was nothing there and then i started putting 50 dollars a week and then it moved up to like 200 a week and right now i'm putting 50 in one five into a secondary retirement account so i already have a retirement account that i'm building um that is separate from all of this. But then I was like, you know what? I got a few bucks left over. I'm going to start a Roth IRA and I'm going to start investing in that too. It's just a few bucks. I have control over it so I can start putting it in dividend paying stocks and letting the Roth IRA start to accumulate on its own for whenever I decide that I need it. And then I'm opening up another portfolio, a brokerage account that is going to be managed by somebody else 
in about October or November. And I'm going to start doing that as well because I have built myself up to this point where I wasn't lazy. I worked hard. Um, I accrued all this stuff and I save all this money that has allowed me to have these options where I can start to accelerate my future and enjoy at the same time, enjoy my present. And as far as transportation goes, I bought my car back in 2019 for $6,800. I had a small loan from a friend of mine for 600 bucks just to get this thing, uh, get put something down. And I the car was for five years. I paid it off in two, paid the car off in two years. I bought it for 6,800 bucks though. It's worth that right now. It's worth that right now. Maintenance has been very, very low. Storage fees have only been for a few months out of the year. Um, it's never broken down on me. I had one part replaced this year. Well, I replaced the fog lights on them because they were getting old, but that cost me $20. That cost me $20 to replace the fog light, the whole housing, not just the light, the bulb itself, but the whole housing, the beautiful smoked fog lights. Um, I already had the new bulbs for it, but it came with the housing and the bulbs, but I took the bulbs out, put in my bulbs, um, and installed them myself. It was an absolute nightmare, but 90 minutes later, I had new housings with fresh bulbs in them, and they look amazing, and I did it myself. And then the assembly unit for my, I bought a serpentine belt, and the, pul so your pulley system, um, those do go after a while. They need to be replaced because, you know, the bearings in them start to wear out. But I replaced mine for, let's see, it was $50 for the assembly, uh, the pulley assembly tensioner unit, the whole assembly. And then the serpentine belt was like another 30, 40 bucks, $90. And my mechanic only charged me 80 to install it. And then I brought it to another place where I had them inspect the other pulleys just to make sure that there was no other, uh, uh, attributing issues and they said nope it's all good you have no problems and there's no charge and then if you ever seen the price of mustang tires it's not cheap price of mustang tires is anywhere between 125 and 200 and 300 bucks a tire and i decided to go with an all season even though i don't drive it all season an all season less expensive version because the car does not have a lot of power it sounds great. It'll definitely do a burnout, but it's not a powerful Mustang. It's not the most powerful Mustang. It's a 260 horsepower crank engine that was taken out of a Crown Vic. Great engine though, and it's perfect. Um, it could use about 40 more horsepower, but we'll get we'll get to that eventually. But because of its needs, and I already built, I've already had this thing set up to take 10 inch tires in the front, uh, in 10 inch tires in the back, and 9 inch tires in the front. I was able to get the exact same tire for the existing rims that I already bought years ago for $77 per tire in the front. $77 per tire in the front, and $98 for the ones in the back per tire. So, um, saving a huge amount of money on a probably, no, without a doubt, the most comfortable tire that I've ever put on that car, that I've ever driven on a car. And they respond great, and they have plenty of tread. So as far as having to, and, and I'm still driving a, a freaking awesome muscle car that I love to be in all the time. I enjoy it so much. I love cleaning it. And I'm, buy, I'm gonna buy a beautiful car in a, probably between a couple, uh, at the latest October, for probably between five and six thousand dollars with very low miles because cars are not expensive and right now the used car market is diving the used car market is diving and these cars that i'm looking for people don't want for some stupid reason or the vast majority of people don't want especially up here and it's like fine your loss is my gain the idea that i aesthetically can take care of myself for no for little to no money uh, afford technology for little to no money to take care of myself physically for little to no money. I had really bad food poisoning, uh, but I handled it within a matter of a week. I was back in the gym. I was back running and in the gym a week later. I had this crazy weird, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Spring, summer, uh, nasal cold, cold, but I got through that in a few days. I'm just getting my voice back. Um, I handled that quickly. My supplements um, are a big expense, but I have them on a routine now, so they're part of my financial infrastructure. 
I'm not delaying life and I'm not being lazy on any of these accounts. And I, my freezer is full. It's got a ton of frozen bananas, strawberries, uh, 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 uh what do you call it? Sorbet that I make myself, um, and chicken, chicken stacked up to the top of the friggin' freezer. I got meatloaf and deli meat in the fridge. I'm eating great, but this is all inexpensive and I spend very little on groceries. Where other people spend probably two hundred dollars on groceries, I spend between thirty and fifty dollars um, on my usual grocery chips, and I just go because I'm looking for specific items and I don't waste my time um, looking at all the crap. I just I look at some cheap produce. I looked at reduced produce. I looked at the meat areas very quickly, and if it's not on sale, I don't buy it. I I buy you know. Eggs are affordable. Frozen vegetables are affordable. Coffee is affordable. And because I take great effort to check in on these places that I go to for whether it's shopping or food or technology, a couple times a week, I see the deals, I take advantage of them, and because of all this, I'm able to spread myself out even more so that I can do the things I want, look the way I want, uh, and live and work the way I want. But it's, it's all effort. All your problems in life are due to your laziness. And that's why I have over, I, from one from last year to now, I have, you know, $10,000 in, uh, in investments. And some of that will go towards um, purchasing a, a secondary vehicle. But I had the luxury to do that because I put in the effort. And I always feel like I could be putting in more effort. Like every time I get 450 calorie workouts at, at nine round at the, at the boxing gym I go to. 450 calories is like, ah, you weak bitch. But if I get 500, that's your marker. That's your marker that you really you really got it going today. Um, and that's an expenditure. That's like 500 a month, basically, because I have PT sessions and public sessions. But I can afford to do that now, at least in my opinion. Now, th believe me, you, you got to check that because that can get... The, I'll be honest with you. That is not a luxury for that's somebody who makes maybe under 50 grand uh, can afford. But if you really, after a while, it can be something that you can do. And I, like I said, I still have my home, uh, my home weights, which I have plenty of. I can, you know, I have almost probably about 300 pounds in, in actual like free weights that I can use. And I was working out yesterday morning. I felt great. Then I worked out again in the afternoon. Uh, I'm probably going to work out again later today. I've been doing some, a little bit, a little bit light cardio work today. I've ate very light and I just feel good because I've been putting in these, effort on all these little things just taking care of myself not focusing on what's going on in the middle east not what's focusing on what's going on in uh in a courtroom in new york city not focusing on what's going on at the college campuses not paying attention to anything that's going on in california you are aware of it but you have to move on with your day because you need to focus on putting in the effort where things count financially aesthetically emotionally mentally physically uh all these things should be your main point of focus. And if you just expect for stupid people, if you be like, look, stupid people do stupid things, you can bet on that. You can invest in that. It's like, this is what Congress is going to do. I know they're going to fail. They don't care about you. You can plan around that and be like, listen, they're going to do what they're going to do. So you know how to invest. You know how to work around that. You know what prices are going to be like in a year. You know what prices are going to be like in six months. If you just pay attention, you'd be like, I'm not focused on anything else but myself and the people I care about around me. And that is how you win. That is how you achieve the American dream, by focusing on what you're doing, not what everybody else is doing. If everybody's running in one direction, you're running in the opposite direction. You're watching what they do, and you're watching the mistakes that they make. And you don't always talk about what you're doing. You shouldn't be talking about what you're doing until you do it. And people will criticize you for that. Being like, oh, you're going to do that. Why? It's like, why are you going to do that? And then they start talking about what they're doing. And it's like, why don't you listen, ask them what they're doing. Don't tell them about what you're doing. Be like, I'm thinking about this, this, this. Just You got to keep it coy because you don't want to corrupt your thought process with somebody else's opinions on things that you may not necessarily want to take into account. It may be disruptive. Now, believe me, you obviously, will obviously want to assume that the person you're talking to knows something you don't. But at the same time, 
when you're when you're watching something that you know is hysteria that you know is a fad you may not want to go into uh, and invest in that because it could be gone like tomorrow so focusing on what you're doing is a primary factor for success and all these things that we pro pro that we focus on on this new uh on this on the new segment of this platform on the new format of this podcast where we take a look at people's um you know daily first world i guess you call them white people problems and we just see okay how is the how what's the easiest solution what's the easiest solution for resolving this or making sure that it's no longer a problem in the future and that's what we do and we just sit here and we review it and we just give you an honest answer and hopefully some of it that we talk about um has some similarities to maybe some challenges that you're facing in your own life, which will allow you to make a better decision, which will possibly avoid, help you avoid some frustration in the future. Now, that being said, you can follow me. Also find me on Instagram at positive underscore sarcasm. Um, you can email me directly, positive sarcasm at outlook.com. Check out my affiliate links in the description down below. Um, there's also some financial links there that'll definitely help you out as well. Now, that being said, we're back to dig.com this week. Let's go ahead. Ooh, might be a few. I'm going to have to take a, spend a few extra minutes on this because uh, I've ranted for about 25 minutes. All right. Well, let's just get after it then. Let me take one more swig of water because I still got a scratchy throat. And then I got work to do today. I got to get an oil change. And then I got to clean my car. My company. My company. Let's get this on the thingy here. There we go. Up it goes. Is starting a massive and complex two-year project. We advertised, but after interview, but... At we advertise, but after interviews, we haven't found a suitable candidate for that pos for the position that's probably most critical. Rather than advertise again, given the urgency, we're t we've ta we've been tapping our networks for candidates to interview. One of my exes has the qualifications to be considered, and last I spoke to him a year ago, he was unemployed. We had a three-year relationship. I thought we were heading for marriage. He didn't, which was the precipitating precipitating factor and one of the reasons we broke up. There was screaming. There was screaming, and we've been mostly no contact since, except a few times where we've ran into each other randomly. Those conversations have not been, quote, friendly, exactly, but cordial. That was four years ago. I'm over it, and also he seemed over it when he ran into each other a year ago. This is a position I have direct management over, and, and I have, and I will have to rely quite heavily on it, as it will be on-site for the project, and I will mostly be off-site. Should I reach out to my ex to submit an application to the position, or is this a bad idea? Bad idea. 100% bad idea. Don't get involved. Just completely stay out of it altogether. This is a very black and white scenario. Look, regardless of their qualifications, if uh, whatever reasons they're unemployed, I'm not going to judge somebody for being unemployed. But I am going to tell you straight up that this is just a bad idea because you can, you cannot human. It's just human psychology. You're, you're not going to be able to separate those two things. The fact that you used to be intimate couple, um, you had major disagreements in your personal life. Uh, and you're going to be overseeing this person, whether it doesn't matter if him, her, doesn't matter. A hundred percent. No, do not do it. Continue to see qualified candidates because it is a con there is conflict of interest or there are things that could build up, um, that will lead to some issues later. And if you're going to heavily rely on this person that you were screaming at, uh, a few years ago, this is not a risk worth taking. And this is your recommendation for this part. Uh, uh, no, just flat out, don't do it. Find somebody else. Just keep looking. I don't care how, quote, dry the market is right now. Somebody's looking for water. Somebody's always looking for water. Speaking of water. Move on. <clears throat> My husband and I have been married for 30 years, but have never really been happy with each other. <laughs> okay. Whew. Moving on. Four years, I have had painful skin infections on my face, which have required uh, trips to multiple dermatologists. They have done biopsies and still can't pinpoint the cause of my skin problems. Okay. Recently, because of one of my infections was spreading to my sinus cavity and my eye, I moved out of the master bedroom into one of the kids' old rooms. My skin is clearing up now, and I'm pain-free. I've always suspected that my husband might have something to do with this. Plus, I found a book he had about wild mushrooms. In it, he had underlined a part that said mushrooms are parasitic. What do you think? Um, okay. So, you had 
your infections, blah, 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 blah. You've always had painful skin infections. Um, you suspect that your husband might have something to do with this, but I, I posted found a book about... So, all right, let me read this, read this back. You've been married for 30 years. You have painful skin infections on your face, which require multiple trips to the dermatologist. You've done biopsies. And then as soon as you moved out of the bedroom that your husband's in, um, your skin is clearing up and you're pain-free. So does your husband... So you guys sleep close. Is there something on the bed that's a concern? Is there something that's on his skin that's a concern? Like, does he shower with a certain soap? Or how is his hygiene? Has your diet changed? Have you been um, using, like, uh, uh, have you been eating less carbohydrates? Uh, you know, things that cause, like, uh, maybe you have, like, um, what do you call it? Like a an autoimmune deficiency of some kind where... You can only consume like really basic proteins and, you know, maybe like some leafy greens or something like that or, you know, like a ketogenic, like, you know, proteins and fats. Is that something? I mean, the wild mushroom thing, um, I don't know what that means, but I'm just concerned that, well, what is he taking? You can ask him about it. Uh, if he had, an, he had underlined a part that said wild mushrooms are parasitic. Well, are you eating wild mushrooms? I, what? Had this conversation. First of all, I'm glad that your your skin, your pain free, blah blah blah. But I'm just curious, like, um, where did where did you get this information? You know, where where did you find this information? Like, what do, what did your doctor say? Um, and what are yeah? What do you plan on what do you plan on doing about it? I mean, I I don't like the fact that. Well, let's get to the the ground thing here. I don't like the fact that you're in another room from your husband when you guys sleep at night. That's not a healthy marriage. That is a that is a horrible, horrible marriage. That shouldn't that shouldn't take place, like at all. That needs to be changed. Um. Yeah, it is a cause of concern. You need to talk to your husband. You married the goddamn guy. You've been together for thirty years. If you haven't been particularly happy, it's like, well, why didn't you guys ever talk about this? What's the problem? Where would the communication go? Why is it all of a sudden I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm seeing oh, I've been married for thirty years. We've never really been happy together. It's like, well, why the fuck are you two together? Why are you two together? And why haven't you sat down and talked about it in at least one of those thirty years? Are you just complacent? Are you content with your own misery? Talk to each other. You live together. You swore an oath to each other. And if you're not going to be happy, either figure out a way to become happy or get the hell out. I know. Being happy is so hard. But Jesus Christ, you marry the guy for 30 years. You'd think you guys could have a conversation where you'd figure out a way to possibly be happy. Have this conversation about, number one, are you guys happy? And number two, what's with the fucking mushrooms? And figure out what kind of soap he's using. Figure it out. Have a conversation. It's the only way you guys are going to be able to solve problems. Jesus. This, is, this one kind of annoys me. But... I've said what I had to say. Figure it out. Have a conversation and see what changed. Because it isn't just, oh, your husband makes you itch. Your husband gives you skin problems. It's not him. It's you guys, both of you. And maybe he he uses a soap that, you, that doesn't work with you. I don't know. But it, you're not going to know any of these things unless you sit down and have a talk with them. My God. Moving on. A sip of water. <clears throat> I've been married for 12 years. It's a wonderful relationship with two kids, except for one thing. I'm a sex addict, and my wife has zero interest in sex. Since getting pregnant with our second child, we've pretty much almost never had sex. I'm still crazy in love with her, though, and everything else about our relationship is great. Last year, my wife found out... Last year, my wife found out about a sugar baby I've been keeping. We got divorced. It was messy, but we ended up getting back together. It's been over a year, and I haven't cheated again. Okay. Although it takes great determination. Then recently something from the past resurfaced. Five years ago, I met a lesbian couple that wanted to have a baby. They couldn't decide who should carry it, uh, so they decided the best way was to let nature decide. After several months and some of the most wild, fun three people can have, one of them got pregnant. They had me sign a contract saying I was just a donor, had no rights as a father. I would never contact them after my work was done. I signed it, but never got a copy. I thought this was all a happy memory until they broke up and the mother came calling for child support in ex extortionate quantities. If this 
comes to light, my wife may explode in a fashion that may put Mount St. Helens to shame to be and would be equally devastating. What do I do here? Um, all right. Well, okay. So now you're in legal trouble and you're in marital trouble. You're 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 screwed. You're screwed. The only thing you can't hide this. You can't hide this. Um if you signed a contract and you didn't get a copy, um was this thing ever notarized? So what you need to do here is you need to consult a lawyer. You need to tell them exactly what happened. After you consult with the lawyer and tell them exactly, exactly what happened, the you need to find out you need to find a copy of that letter. See if it has been notarized. And if it's been notarized, obviously if it hasn't been notarized, it doesn't have any value. Um, you signed it, but you never got a copy. Okay, where's that contract? If you have no rights as the father, then you have no right. Then basically child support, hopefully, depending upon the laws in your state, are moot. But you need to find that co you need to find that copy or that paperwork and speak with a lawyer about how to obtain it. And if you know both parties, you need to talk to both parties and get this straightened out here. Um, now, focus on that first. Talk to that lawyer. Get that legal. Let's just put it this way. Talk to a lawyer. Get that copy of that paperwork. See where that takes you legally. And if that's the case, and let's say they that means that the, the paperwork exists. They have no legal recourse that against you. You're done. Walk away. As far as you're concerned, you've moved on. Your wife is with you. Try to focus on rebuilding that relationship. If it doesn't work that way um, and this lady comes calling for child support and you can't find that paperwork and she has every legal right to come after you for it, then you basically need to tell your wife at that point, look, Remember the, the whole situation we talked about and you agreed that we should get back together? Okay. Well, um, I signed this paperwork and I can't find it. And now they're coming for me for child support. Um, you know, that's it. And I'm sorry. It's your decision what you want to do, blah, blah, blah. And if she leaves, I don't blame her. You're the one who screwed up. And quite frankly, I don't know what you look like. I don't. You're you're attracted to her, so why weren't you focusing on taking taking care of yourself to make yourself more attractive, so that maybe she'll want to have sex with you more, so that you don't go and impregnate a lesbian couple, and now they don't. Now they come after you for child support. You might have made a. You could have made some better decisions in the past that wouldn't affect you as poorly as they are affecting you today. But these are your options. Number one, go to an attorney. Um, and be like, okay, I'm looking for this paperwork. Contact the other person. See if you can get a copy of it. If it's been notarized, does the place that notarized it have a copy? And if that's so, bring it. What what legal value does that have in court? And if it basically, if it does kill the whole issue, great. Walk away from it, and then you're done with it. But if you've got nothing other than they're coming for you and you're screwed, you need to let your wife know so that she doesn't get dragged into it. You may not be able to save yourself, but you can at least save her from the bullshit that's coming your way. I say so. So don't make her a victim of your mistakes as well. <clears throat> All right, let's do one more and we'll get out of here. What should I do after my husband moved his sick mom with us with the expectations that I handle 100% of her care needs? We just took in my husband's mom, who is pretty much an invalid she has a million needs. She's cranky and she's making my life miserable. She's also making my 11-year-old daughter miserable. My husband has asked us repeatedly to be patient, but he is away from the house most of the time and has not handled a single one of her meals, medicinal regimens, diaper changes. After one month of this, I am more than ready to explore other options, but when I mention it, my husband gets wildly offended. What do I do? Um, your husband needs to handle this. It's his responsibility. It's his mother. It's his responsibility. You're obviously willing to do some work, but as far as how this is going, you're not going to get... You, your daughter is miserable. Um, you're miserable. Something has to change. If she has to go into a home, then she has to go into a home. Uh, and quite frankly, if she's got a thousand, according to you, a million needs, it's like, listen, you can only handle so much to a point. But if your life starts to severely suffer and your 11-year-old's development starts to severely suffer, I don't know how. I, and I'm just taking this for how you're saying it. Um, your husband needs to handle this. Your husband needs to come up with a solution uh, that 
protects the sanctity of the household in which he swore an oath to. Um, you took in your your mom, but maybe your mom needs to be somewhere where she can get the proper treatment she deserves. And it may, and I get it. Homes can suck too. Nursing homes suck too. But that may be an option you need to explore depending upon the circumstances. Because if you can't get anything done at home as the wife and with as the eleven and with your eleven year old daughter, something has to happen. Something has to give here. And your husband, whether he gets wildly offended, it's like, hey, I can't do this. Listen, husband, I can't do this. She's making our lives miserable. You need to do something here. You brought her in. It's your responsibility. Figure it out. If you think I'm wrong or maybe there's another take on that, let me know. But it's, let me know. Let me know what avenue you would take if this was your situation. Um, so if you, ha- if you have another option, you can comment below, uh, depending upon where you listen to the podcast. You can email me with how you'd maybe want to handle this. But as far as I'm concerned here, the husband needs to do something and, and more than what he's already doing. So if you have questions, concerns, or comments, you can hit me up at my website, positivesarcasm.com. Just go to the contact page uh, of that section. What does my contact page look like lately? Let's go ahead and click on that. Contact slash donate. Bam, it's right here. You just scroll down, click below to grant claim free stocks, Coinbase, Webull, uh, Gemini, Cash App, Acorn, PayPal. All those links are right there for you to utilize. First name uh, is not required. Uh, name is, I guess, required. Email address, subject matter, message, Twitter handle is not required. Uh, phone number is not required. And I don't keep this data for uh, any other reasons. Just I don't actually keep this data. I don't really do anything with it. So um, just go ahead and send me a message here if you want. You can also hit me up on Instagram at under positive underscore sarcasm. Um, you can email me directly at positive sarcasm, positive sarcasm at outlook.com. So, um, yeah, go ahead and invest in the apps. Use, utilize the apps. You'll get f- some free stocks or free cash or, you know, a, a, a bump in your um, uh, in your monthly APOI. Uh, if you just have idle cash sitting there, you'll have um, you'll you'll earn interest every day on that on that cash just sitting there. So. Go ahead and utilize that stuff to your benefit. Don't be lazy. Come on. The world is your oyster, especially lately. I don't want to hear about interest rates, okay? I don't want to hear about any of it. Don't use it. Don't use anything that they say to you as an excuse to not do something, to not achieve something, to not chase something, okay? It's not hard. To, it, it is hard to achieve the American dream. It's always been hard to, to achieve the American dream. That's why it's worth it. Uh. You can find this episode anywhere on YouTube, uh, YouTube, Positive Sarcasm Podcast, Rumble, Positive Sarcasm Podcast, and audio version is anywhere podcasts are available. Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Podcast Addict, Substack, and of course, downloadable and streamable from my website, PositiveSarcasm.com. In the meantime, thank you for listening, watching, and subscribing, uh, and I'll talk to you all next week, recorded here from New Hampshire's beautiful seacoast inside the Spare Parts Studio for entertainment purposes only. This has been a positive sarcasm presentation.